Hello, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to use CSS code to change the font properties uh, on a web page. Uh, I'm going to do this using an external style sheet containing CSS code and we're going to be changing different font properties. So things like the font weight, uh, for example from normal to, to bold, font style, so changing it from normal to italic for example, uh, font size, font family, so different fonts like Arial, Tahoma, Times New Roman, being able to change those, as well as font variants, so small caps, for example, uh, and the line height. So there are two ways that we can change the values for different font properties. We could do it across multiple lines of code for an element such as a paragraph or a heading. Um, so for example, if for paragraphs we wanted to um, change different font properties, we could add, specify the font family on a line of code the font weight on another line of code, font style, font size, etc. each on their own individual lines. Or we could do it all on one line. So for example, if we wanted to change all of those same properties for um, a paragraph, we could add that those properties, specify the values for those properties in a single line of code as well. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. Okay, and what we've currently got at the moment here is a simple web page here. We have a H1 size heading, a H2 size heading, and then two paragraphs. So we'll look at changing font properties for both the headings and paragraphs here. Now, we can change uh, font properties for any type of text content on the page. So we could just apply um, the, the um, style to font properties for the entire body of the page and that would apply to different size headings and paragraphs as well. Or we can just select individual elements. So for example, a H1 size heading, we could have font styles for that, the font property set for that. And then for H3 size headings, we might have a different uh, style for that. So let's go and look at the CSS code here. In the body section of the page, we have, uh, as I mentioned, H1 size heading, H2 size heading, and two paragraphs. Over here on the right hand side I have my CSS code that I'm about to add in a file called theme.css which I've linked here in the HTML file. Okay so let's have a look at changing um, to start with we'll do the h1 size heading so in CSS code we can use the h1 element selector and what I might do is change the font family now there's a number of different um, web safe fonts that you can choose from, which I'll go over in a minute, but you can also add your own fonts uh, or use a heap of different online fonts that are available. And we'll look at that in the next tutorial. So I'm going to just use Arial. It's currently Times New Roman and I'm going to change the font family to Arial. All right, now for my paragraphs, I'm going to specify the P element selector for paragraphs. I'm going to say font family, I'm going to go with Georgia. Uh, I'm going to say that I want font weight bold instead of normal, which is the default. Font style of italic instead of normal, which is the default. And just specify the font size as 12 point. So 12 PT for point. Okay, so let's save that. We'll go back and refresh the page. Now we can see here that the heading uh, is in Arial font. Uh, it's using the Arial font family now, the H1 heading. The H2 heading here is still Times New Roman, so nothing different there. Uh, but the two paragraphs here are now uh, Georgia fonts, font family. They're bold, they're in italic, and uh, the size is 12 point. So I don't really like the bold and the italics. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to get rid of that. But before I do, I'm going to show how you can change all of this here into just one line of code. All right, so I'll just make that a bit bigger. So what we can do is instead of saying uh, font family, font weight, font style, font size, we can do it like this in one line of code. We can say font, italic, bold, 12 point Georgia. So all the same information there, but just on one line of code in that order. If we go back and refresh the page, that still looks the same there for the two paragraphs. 
Okay. Now we could also do it like this. We could say body, oops, body, font family, and the other information there we might want, like font weight or font style. We could say font family Arial. And if I go back and refresh the page, we'll see that the H2 heading has now also um, become Arial. It's using the Arial font family in addition to the H1 heading, but the two paragraphs are still using the Georgia font. So what I've done here, as I've said, for the body section, uh, make anything, any text in the body section use the Arial font family. But here I've said specifically for H1, use Arial, and specifically for paragraphs, use Georgia. Now, if I was going to get rid of uh, these two blocks of code here and save and refresh, we'd see that everything was Arial font family. So you can apply, you can specify font properties for the whole entire page, the body section, and then you can go and specify individual elements that you want to change. And you could also use IDs and classes to reference uh, individual elements or um, a range of different elements in the page. Okay, so moving on now, um, one important thing to be aware of is the different units that we can have for the font size property. And I'm going to go over four different units that we can use for the font, font size property. First one here that I've used is points. So I've said 12 point size for paragraphs. All right. Now, points are usually used for print media uh, and they're a fixed size unit, so they can't really scale to fit mobile devices. All right, so it's it's not going to adapt very well for when your users are viewing the web page on, um, on a mobile device. If you specify a very large uh, size in points, then it might be too big on the user's screen. Uh, so it's best to use scalable units rather than fixed size units. Uh, another fixed size unit is pixels. So you can use pixels too, um, which is PX instead. But again, they're fixed size units that are designed for, for media that will be read on a, the design for media that will be read on a screen. But uh, one pixel is the equivalent of one dot on the computer screen. Downside of pixels is that they don't scale to fit mobile devices or screen readers for the visually impaired. So we've got two other options here that we'll look at. We can use EM. Now the EM unit is scalable and it's used in web documents. And one EM is equal to the current font size of the web document. So for example, if the document font size is 12 point, then one EM would be equal to 12 point. All right. Uh, 2 EM would therefore be equal to 24 point. Uh, and you can use decimals as well. So you could say 1.5 EM, for example. So this is a popular unit to use on the web because it's mobile friendly uh, and it's used in responsive web design. So when we design web pages to um, adapt to different screen sizes. So if we go back after changing that to 1 EM and have a look at the, the uh, font here, it's still the same size. It's, it's still 12 point equivalent, um, but we're now using a scalable unit. So if I change that to 2 EM, it should be twice as big. And 3 EM should be three times as big. So uh, one point was, uh, uh, one EM, sorry, was the equivalent of 12 point, 2 EM was the equivalent of 24 point and, and so on. But we can use decimals. So I can say 1.5 if I like. 1.2. Right. Okay. Um, and also another unit we can use is the percent unit. So it's just like the EM unit. All right. So it's um, it's scalable, uh, but we use a percentage instead. So 100% would be the equivalent of 12 point or the current document font size. 200% would be the equivalent of 24 point and so on. So just like EM, it's scalable. Um, you can specify, you know, you could say 120% as well, just like you might say 1.2 EM, you might say 120%. Okay. 
So in summary, the, the EM and percent units are really what you'd want to use for the font size property, especially if you plan on developing a mobile friendly or responsive website. So Stein, try and stay away from pixels and points because they don't scale uh, for mobile devices and just try to get used to using EM and percent instead. Now what we're going to do is quickly have a, um, a look at, at uh, some of the web safe fonts that you can include in your code in, in CSS to, to change the font family. Uh, and in the next tutorial, we'll start looking at how to uh, install your own fonts or use um, fonts that are available to download on the web. So there's um, a few different categories of fonts. There's serif fonts, sans serif fonts, and then there's monospace fonts. So I'm just going to change, I'm going to only do this to um, the paragraphs for now. So we'll just leave the, the headings as is. And what we're going to change now, looking at different font families, we'll just do that for the paragraph. I'm going to get rid of um, italic bold though. I'll keep this still 120%, but what we'll look at now is the difference between those different categories of fonts. So with the serif fonts, and I'll link this uh, in the video, there'll be a, a list of different fonts that you can choose from, but serif fonts, um, we've already got one example here. Just save and refresh. So this is Georgia and this is a serif font. All right, now serif font has these little, if I just zoom in, has these little ticks or strokes uh, at the end of the letters. So here on the T we can see little strokes at the ends here at the top of the T and at the bottom and on the H as well at the top and on the bottom. So that's what's called a, a serif font. A sans serif font like Arial doesn't have those little ticks or strokes. So that those ticks or strokes are called sans serif, oh, sorry, they're called serifs. And sans serif means without serif. So any sans serif fonts like Arial, uh, Helvetica, Comic Sans, uh, Tahoma, etc., they don't have those little serifs, those little ticks or strokes on the ends of um, each part of the letter. Okay, so there's a there's a few different um, serif fonts to choose from. There's Georgia, as we've seen. There's Times New Roman, or just Times. All right, so that's the Times font. So those are a couple of examples of uh, serif fonts. Sans serif fonts, we've got Arial, we've already seen. Oh, we've got Helvetica. So that's Helvetica. Uh, we've got uh, Comic Sans. <laughs> or just Comic, I think you can type in. Ooh, comic Sans MS, try that. There we go. Everyone's favorite font. <laughs> Uh, I've got Tahoma. All right, there's uh, Vedana. There's, uh, I think, Geneva. I think that, yeah, Geneva. Impact as well, I think, is another one, which is a bit bolder. All right, so serif fonts have those little serifs, those little ticks or strokes at the end of letters, sans serif, don't. Um, so you can use different fonts that work well for your headings or for your paragraphs. Try use a font family that's um, highly readable and works well with the, the theme, uh, the rest of the theme that you have. There's also monospace fonts. So these are ones like Curia New. <clears throat> Yeah, so there's a few different different types of fonts there that you can use as well. Um, look a little bit like code. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at how to install your own fonts um, and use a range of different fonts that are available to download on the web. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.